Well, I'd like to start off our discussion of organic chemistry this semester with chapter 15. It's really a fun chapter. It deals with conjugation, reactions of dienes, and then some lab topics involving ultraviolet spectroscopy. So to start off here, what I want to look at are three different types of arrangements of double bonds. So the first one is called isolated. So an isolated double bond is when we have two or more single bonds between the double bonds. And so here we have a, a double bond, right, both atoms here, sp2 hybridized, right? But between the double bond and the other double bond, we have atoms that are sp3 hybridized. So all of these are sp3. So they're isolated because the double bonds are separated by a single bond. So conjugated occurs when we have our double bond right next to another double bond. If you notice here that there are no atoms that are sp3 hybridized between our double bonds. So that's the arrangement of double bonds that we're going to be looking at in this chapter. And then there's one other arrangement and that is called cumulated. So cumulated double bonds are double bonds that are connected to each other, kind of like in the molecule CO2. So reviewing some first semester OCHEM, hybridiz hybridization of this is sp2, that is also sp2 and then this carbon right in the middle is sp hybridized. Now of the three we want to determine which type of diene arrangement is the most stable. If you're a chemistry major and you go on it's kind of a neat experiment and physical chemistry sometimes you can use a bomb calorimeter to do these tests and kind of prove it to yourself. So let's take a minute and let's look at stabilities of alkenes. Now, what I want to look at first is just the delta H of hydrogenation for mono-substituted um, alkene and a di-substituted alkene. And notice that these are um, only one type of bond, right? So we don't have accumulated double bonds together. It's one type of alkene. So if you take this um, alkene that's at the end of the molecule and add some H2 and platinum or palladium or something like that, you end up getting a carbon, uh, carbon double bond that's been eliminated and added. Across it is two additional um, uh, atoms of hydrogen. So your CH here, CH2 has turned into a CH2, CH3. So the delta H for that is negative 30.1 kcals per mole. If you have a di-substituted alkene, then the delta H is negative 27.6. It's lower, remember, because of Zaitsev's rule. Remember, we saw that in first semester, and the more substituted the double bond, the more stable that double bond is. And the lower the delta H is, the more stable. Now, what about molecules with multiple double bonds? So we just looked at molecules with only one. Well, let's put them together. So if we have a molecule like this, um, where we have a double bond and another double bond, and now they're separated here. Right? So these are isolated, remember? And this double bond is monosubstituted, and this is monosubstituted. So over here on the top, that's monosubstituted here, right? And then remember, this is di-substituted. So mono and mono is negative 30 plus minus, uh, negative 30, right? kcals per mole here. And um, that's what we predict when we just add them up. And experimentally, we get this number. So they match. Our experimental 
data matches what our prediction is. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Well, let's look below. What about this arrangement? So here we have, um, if we're just adding them up, if they're additive, we have a mono substituted, and then down here, a die substituted. So that would be a 30, negative 30.1, right? Plus negative 27.6 gives us negative 57.7, right? So this is negative 57.7 kcals per mole. So that's what we predict to occur. And then we go through and we carry this experiment out. And when we do that, we get an experimental number of negative 53.7. So when we compare that to what our predicted number is, which we just did on the left side here, we see that there's a net stabilization of about four kcals per mole. Now that's interesting, because that says that when we have these double bonds next to each other, something special happens that makes them more stable. To really understand what happens there, we're gonna have to take a look at molecular orbital theory again. So we're gonna look at MO theory, and we'll explain that in the next couple of pages. Right, so there's isolated, now we have conjugated, and then, um, and then we have accumulated. So accumulated, is, they're just not stable. Um, so when we have these, these things are called allenes, and when we have these double bonds next to each other, they're found to be less stable than the isolated double bonds. Right, so uh, tough to um, add these up as far as what we predict, but when we look at those two numbers, even if we take negative 30.1, you get negative 69.8. So that's still going to be larger than negative 60.2. So it's just less stable. All right. So let's take a look here and put this all together. So when we put all of that together, we end up getting the following um, kind of pattern. So you have cumulated dienes being um, the least stable. So down here we have least stable, um, terminal alkyne, internal alkynes. We're gonna throw those things in there um, just for comparison. Um, and then you have your isolated diene and conjugated diene on the far right hand side. So this would be the most stable. So sometimes in books they'll give you a, a bunch of alkenes and maybe some alkynes and they'll have you rank them. So you can consult our notes in this little table to help you make that um, judgment. 